Today is January 13th. Kluber worked out, and the Yankees and everyone else watched him and said, ooh, he's working out, isn't he? And a bunch of other stuff and some voicemails. Let's do it. Let's talk Yanks. Talking Yanks with old John Boy. John Boy Jake. Recaps galore and weekly awards. Stat lines, steaming hot takes. Your Yankees news with these two fine dudes. It's time for Talking Yanks. Talking Yanks with old John Boy. John Boy and Jake. Talking Yanks with old John Boy. John Boy and Jake. Hello and welcome to Talking Yanks. Thank you very much for joining us today on this fantastic Wednesday afternoon, late Wednesday afternoon, or anyone that's listening later, whenever you're listening to us, thank you for joining us. But the people, the patrons that are listening live, thanks for joining us Wednesday afternoon, approximately 3.31 p.m. My name's Jimmy, sitting over there is Jake. Behind the desk is producer Bug Bug Dude. This is Talking Yanks. We got a whole gang of topics to talk about today. Maybe like four bullet points. Jake, how are you doing? Despite all my rage, I am still just a rat in a key. (laughs) Oh, snap. That was lit. David James. A little update for everyone. Um, Happy Fourth of July to everyone out there. I asked my brother Luke to go get me some of Bill's poison. Ugly. He doesn't spend a lot of time. <laughs> That's <was> good. <laughs> that was just great humor. <laughs> he doesn't spend a lot of time in the office, so he thought I was just being a jokester. Yeah. Oh, I'll get you poison, okay? Yeah. And I was like, No, can you go get me some of Bill's poison? The coffee in the fridge. Yeah. I gave him a cup of half water. Yeah. Because I said, just pour the coffee he into there. That. Don't dump out no, the water. He emptied that. Uh, I don't know what he did, but this poison is. Terrible. Anyway, it's a good episode today. We're going to talk about the Yankees. How are you, Jimmy? I'm doing well. How are you? I'm good. (sighs) Oh, my God. (laughs) Boring. Yankees sign all of the good guys. Kluber's going to be here soon. You think so? No, but yes. I'd give it 50-50, and I think a lot of other teams can't say that. Like, the Yankees are probably actually in the Corey Kluber running. It, they can get outpriced easily. Eric Cressy. Is a, the Yankees' technical head trainer? Is that the position? He's like almost he like a have training to be with the team. consultant. Yeah. He's almost it's kind like of a sweet gig. Head, like, can you just tell us what we're doing right and wrong? And Kluber, big Cressy guy, worked out at the Cressy facility. So, I don't know. I mean, we're obviously reaching at some stuff. It makes sense. Like I'm Corey, saying 50-50. Corey Kluber as the basically in the Paxton spot this year. Less money, higher Ooh. injury risk. I don't have him like that. I have him like the Felix Hernandez spot for the Braves. Right, which Tulowitzki comparison. Right. Like, if the Yankees sign Kluber and we do a reaction episode, I will be saying, don't expect anything. What's that mean, though? Because if if the Yankees sign Corey Kluber, he's on the big league squad. He's in the starting rotation. I, yeah, that's why I said I think the Yankees can be outpriced on him quickly. I think if no one wants to guarantee him a big league spot, and they're going to sign him, and he's not going to go to the minors or not going to do rehab assignments or not going to – if he's just – no, I'm only signing if I'm in the big league and I'm getting the ball every five days, I think the Yankees are immediately out. Then they're out because he's going to get that. I don't know. Like, he's kind of like – it's very similar to Tulo. I just think pitchers are different than hitters. Yeah, but everything about Kluber has been awful. If Corey Kluber, which the reports were he was – not necessarily looking like his old self, but he looked like a pitcher at the start of spring training. Like a team's going to give him a spot. Yeah, all right, then the Yanks are, I, I put it much lower then. Yankees are out. Yeah. On Corey Kluber. Yeah, I didn't have him in that little vein. Okay. I'm still going on my inside source on this one from a his, couple years his, ago. Uh, his ceiling allows him to not do that. 
Yeah. If there's any chance he I know. Looks I'm, like I'm hanging on to the one report right. I had two years ago. I told you he looked bad. But it wasn't a guy. It was a someone very close to the rehab situation. Right, but that was also, what, a year and a half ago now? Yeah. He could have got stronger. Still, he works out with Eric Cressy. Still dude. the same injury. He works out with Cressy. Do you know what I'm going to look like after I work out with Cressy? Same, same fat toad. Same blob of shit. Okay. I don't think you look like a blob of shit. No. It's just making a joke. But in the realm of humans, like if it's me and the Hemsworth bros, you're like, oh, well, that's I, a piece of poop. Yes, yes, yes. But if it's you and two really short, really obese guys, I'd be like, oh, that guy's in shape. I see short guys on the train sometimes. Like it if it's if it's like Jack Black, current Jack Black, Live current Jack Kyle Black. Gass, and you, right. you'd be like, that dude's not bad. <laughs> yeah. I in the healthy. weight department, and in this is skills, what we're trying to tell skills people, and like, skills and entertainment department. Surround yourself You're with s- lesser people and feel better about yourself. Yes, yes, yes. That's why I do the show with you. That was see the Jake. That was again. That was just a joke. That was just a joke. You know, it wasn't real. What did Joel Sherman say about Kluber today? What lies did we get tweeted today? Joel Sherman, I like him. He's a good segment. Legit. He said Yankees and Mets both in interesting market. Oh, everyone's in because 25 people showed up to Kluber pitching. But uh, what did they say about his miles per hour? They said he looked like the pitcher, a pitcher at the start of spring training, which makes me feel like he wasn't dialed up, but he was still. That's that's like. Looks like he has room the, to go. The writer has something in mind there. Okay. And doesn't. That's not written well enough to let us know which way. So does he look like he's just half-assing it and getting in the groove, or does he look ready to go for the season? Two completely different ways I think you can spin that. Yeah. Because I thought him initially that is saying, like, he's ready to go. And you no. kind of took it as he's still gearing up. Yeah. So I don't know what it means. Yeah. I mean, I think every spring training we talk about it, pitchers build up. Like, if... Oh, I think it's like pi- best shape of their life, like crispy, looking no, great. No, not for pitchers. I think pitchers are like they do their first start, and it's like, oh, you know, he was only touching 91 today, but he builds up. They're like, they're in the best that. shape of their life, yeah, is what the report is, but then they like they still like don't like air it out for right. 70 pitches or whatever. They still have to we'll up see. Through 30 pitches in front of 25 pitches. If Kluber whatever. ends up on the Yanks, we'll talk ourselves into him. If it's anywhere else, we'll say he's going to stink. Go check out Corey Kluber's Twitter. Because we're fans. Go check out. He's Corey. got a good Twitter. Oh my! It's it's worse than judges. No, I mean he's a clue bot. Like they say, he doesn't right. even talk in team meetings and stuff. Amazing, amazing player Twitter Ooh, account. This is good. Does he have a family Twitter? Oh, he's got a foundation. Okay, cool. Kluber was good. Remember. His wife's on Twitter. Proud to be a Miller Light partner and proud to be in Cleveland. Hashtag ad. I mean, he hasn't. Has he over? Does he have the Twitter app on his phone? Has he ever no. had the Twitter app on his phone? No. Zero chance, right? What? Posted a picture on April 8th, 2019 of him pitching with the caption, Make each day your masterpiece. So enjoy that. <sighs> yeah, so I don't know. I think the Yankees are out on Kluber if he's if he wants to be a f- every day rotation spot. Okay. Who knows? Out. Because what are you giving him then? You get him decent money. You could do incentive stuff. You do a one for three, and then for every. Ten starts, he gets one twenty five. You think he'd take that one for three? I don't. Again, I don't know what he looked like today. Michael Waka got one for three in his stat stunk last year, but he has one really cool pitch. Yeah, I mean, Katie's been calling me out a lot lately because see how my arm is. Yeah, this is a natural resting spot for me. Yeah, and Katie thinks it's really weird. That's your delivery stance. No, it's just kind of a. You get an extra inch, so you don't look dainty. I (laughs) should. Jake's having a very dainty day. I'm having a dainty that, that day. That didn't listen to John Boy Jake Radio today. He's See, great. I mean, dude, what? Every time I do the power arm, you're less dainty. I do it to stretch my shoulder out. 
because when I get stuck in this position, right, the dainty position, my chest and my shoulders just go down on me. So I'll I, do. I look like an absolute tank. No, I'm not sure. In the power stance, I'm not sure. Your I'm face sure. is slowly becoming more and more the same color as the curtains behind you. Yeah, I'm fading away into the abyss. Aren't what we else? all? Aren't we all? You know. I'm uh, the most pathetic man in the world. <laughs> Jesus. Quick with the drops today is BDD. What kind of drops? How fast was Corey Kluber's fastball when he was good? 2017? 94. Average. 2017 is when he was, like, really good, right? I can get there. No, 92.7. And they, 93 uh, average. 93. And they, were, they said he was sitting at 90 today. He threw 30 pitches. He was sitting at 88 to 90. So we'll see. Yanks may get Kluber. Baseball. Maybe not. So yes or no? Those are the you options. said no. I'm going no. Yeah, I think I think if it's if it's if it's not like uh Well, so you made the Tulo comparison. Yeah. And Tulo was was Tulo the Glaber year? I think the only teams that are gonna give him like we guarantee that you'll be in our starting rotation for, you know, right off the jump. Our team's not in contention. And he might ra- and I think Tulo got But this is also a really weird year for starting pitchers because everyone's talking about how nobody got built up last year. Uh and the Yankees, we have so many young guys between Clark and Davey who are guys we're penciling in right now. Like if you pencil Kluber in for the five, if he's good, awesome. If he gets hurt, you are gonna rotate well, five, Clark and yeah, Davian yeah. too. That's a little different when you said Paxton, who was like our two three last year. That's a little different than where you started, which scared me. I was saying Paxton's like results, which again is a really weird way to phrase it. Okay, but like what happened with Paxton? He got hurt a lot. Like if they sign Kluber, there's no excitement. <laughs> excitement. It's just like okay, this is something. No, I mean you you talk yourself into it and you hope that there's he's still got something in the tank. If not, you know, if he's hurt or bad, you're, we're going to the guys we've already got pretty much ready to go but aren't going to be able to throw 160 innings. Yeah, no one is, especially not him. Not me. You could. It'd just do a lot of damage. Oh, it'd be bad. It'd be really bad. I don't know if I could. Oh, Patreon chat, Feo, says that uh, you don't you lo- you don't look dainty at all in your power stance. Yeah, dude. So do it. It's more. a power stance. Okay. Tired. One hundred sixty. That's what I was telling you. I don't think I got one sixty innings in the tank. I think you have one hundred and sixty awful innings in you. I don't, dude. To get guys out, I'd have to throw a lot of bullets. I don't have one hundred sixty innings in me, and it's over. You've seen batting practice. A lot of guys, you know, there's pop ups to the outfield. You play a four man outfield. And you just give up four home runs and three to the track. That's an inning. You're done. They're swinging first pitch. Your innings are actually really I'm quick. I'm tired. You're, you could have like a seven-pitch inning, give up four runs, and you're scolded. I'm tired. You'll be tired. Thinking about it. No, you'll be tired for sure. All right, we have voicemails. That's the Kluber news. First voicemail. Jimmy, Jake, BBD, hope you guys had a good new year. Excited to see 2021 from John Boy Media. Just had a quick question. I was listening to Talking Baseball, and you guys were talking about Cash taking out Snell in after two times through the order in Game 6 of the World Series when he was dominating. I just had a question. I was wondering if you think that if the Yankees were in the same situation, we've seen how analytically driven they, they are, like what happened in Game 2 in the playoffs this year against the Rays. Do you think that had the Yankees been in a similar spot where a pitcher was dealing, do you think that they would have maybe a guy not like Garrett Cole, who's like our ace ace, do you think we would have taken him out or left him in? I'm interested to hear your guys' thoughts. Peace. Mm. Um, man, I'm trying to remember. I'm sure people remember better than me. Better. Better me. What were Boone's mistakes in the eighteen play in the nineteen playoffs and eighteen playoffs against the Red Sox and then against the Astros? I mean, did he put? Did- Out of Vino was the Astros, right? Didn't he get tanked? Wasn't he worn out? Worn out. Well, he was. Yeah, yeah. But I'm saying starting pitchers. Did he pull anyone too early? 
I mean, his problem in 18, like he left Severino in too long when everyone knew he was ready. I, I'm, that's what I'm out. saying. I think that right. Boone's had the opposite problem in the playoffs. Mm. I'm, but I'm, I'm really kind of drawing a blank. Eileen, he gets yanked. I, Eileen Boone would have done the same thing just because after Cole, I mean, we saw they had no trust in Davey. Um, I mean, Hap. They've never had trust in Hap. I, I guess the Jordan comparison. Montgomery? Why would that lead to them pulling him? Because they don't they don't trust him. I th- I'm confused. They're, we're talking about the Snell. What happened with Snell in the playoffs? Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. yeah. So you think they would pull? I, I think I they, think that Boone would have pulled Snell. I think I disagree. But it but all it's de- tough because the Yankees don't have another a pitcher of that quality. Like I think if Boone had Snell. We'll just say it's Cole. There's their ace. But they they specifically said not Cole. I think That's the comparison for the like the Yankees would be a, like I see Severino where you went. You were replacing Snell with another pitcher on the Yankees. That's staff. what they asked. Because they said we couldn't do Cole. They said another Yankees pitcher not. Why don't Cole. we just do Snell? Like if yeah, just if Snell was Boone on would the have Yankees. Left Snell. Boone would have left Snell in. It, like it was Snell and Anderson. It was the same. I don't know why we'd change all the pitchers in the scenario because that kind of changes the entire scenario. Right. If it was Snell and you have That's Anderson the and the Rays bullpen, I think Boone would have left him in. I think Boone has been bitten by leaving guys in more than early in the playoffs. Yeah. But I'm trying. I'm feeling. I mean, all the Yankees relief stuff got weird because I mean Chapman was in in the seventh, and then he gets tanked. And yeah, they yeah they they, they overuse had... their good guys and have quick quick leashes on their bad guys. The Yankees. Yeah. They haven't had guys like dealing that you trust to continue doing it. Like Snell, you. There's no reason to think he was gonna. Go to all the way bad. I mean, he could have. Yeah. But no, and we we did this in a job. I think you detailed it pretty well in one of one of the breakdowns there. Hashtag at that like that wasn't a a good move by Cash. It it wasn't like the Rays. He literally went by third time through. We stop. Like Mookie's numbers the third time through were bad. Like Mookie's numbers versus lefties were bad. Like the move. Didn't make sense on a whole lot of levels that we ended up defending the Rays way a little bit. It was almost like Cash went off the tracks. Yeah. I'm trying. I pulled up some game logs from before. Game logs. So in 2018 playoffs. Sure. Game one, Hap is nervous as all hell and just blows it out the gates. So Boone doesn't get given this chance. Yeah. I think we're going to find a common theme here, that Boone doesn't get given this chance. (laughs) Boone would love this chance. Now, this game, game two, they had the bullpen rested because game one was a blowout, and Tanaka had five innings of only one earned run. Um, But the fifth inning, no, and the fifth inning was a smooth one, and he pulled him to give Dellen the fresh inning in the sixth. So that is a situation where he did pull Tanaka there early, Fresh inning is an interesting case. And not there a bullpen as well. that had been beat up. Like you gotta remember Nick Anderson would right. be beat up. Yeah. And they went to a bad reliever in the in the post bad current yeah. on a on a bad streak. I know in Nick their Anderson head, was they fantastic. didn't factor that in at all because yeah. they don't yes. look at relievers. And what, anyway. and what was the score when he took Tanaka out? It, the Yankees were it. winning three okay. to one. So it wasn't decided. This was also the Yankees mean. team that loved their bullpen, though. I mean, this was then Severino got absolutely destroyed in the sixteen to one game. This that was Dellen. I mean, that was good, Chad. Right? That was yeah. full on and, goose. But they brought in Severino like labored to get through what the third. Yes, and then they started and he was the next he only and they made brought it. in Lance Lynn, bases loaded. No, yeah, outs. he only had made a couple starts. Like that was leaving Severino in too long, even though he only pitched three innings. He pitched into the fourth. Then in the elimination game, CC goes three innings pitch, two earned runs. They bring Britton in right away. That's but like CC wasn't expected to do more, and he had a bad third inning. So I don't know. I the the I would love for the Yankees to be in a spot where a starting yeah, pitcher. Let's find out. Is uh, let's trade for is Snell. Dominating through two. What would the pods want for Snell? I actually thought Jake that that was the question. Uh, the way BBD labeled, it, what if the Yankees did Snell? Was the way you labeled it, and I thought the question is, what if the Yankees did the Snell trade? 
Like, who would we have given up? And that was what I was prepping in my brain right. the whole time, and then it kind of threw me for a loop. Otherwise, I would have prepped all this stuff in the two seconds of prep I do. Did great. Yeah. Do you have it? I'm trying to think, man. Like, they went to the... They went to the CS against in in nineteen. That's like a bummer to remember, huh? Mm. We want to walk through all these starts. Let me walk through them real. I'll do it real quick. Real quick. Okay. Game one of the CS that the Yankees lost to the Astros. Masahiro Tanaka goes six innings pitch, zero earned runs. They give the ball to Adovino, Britain, and the Yankees were up big. So that's fine. Sure. Uh, game two, Yankees lose three to two. Uh, Paxton started. They had to pull him early in right. Houston. Remember, they just it, it was going a ride. They used the whole line. pen. Now they got uh, they had the off day to travel back to New York, but the bullpen did pitch a lot. They lose this game four to one, and Sevy pitched four point one innings, two earned runs. Um, so maybe that did he get into trouble? Yeah, single walk, and they 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 yanked him. And that was, like, again, injury savvy? Yeah, I mean, he missed, yeah. like, all of 2019. He made, what, three starts in the regular season. Yeah. All right. Then the next game, they they get blown out. Tanaka goes five innings pitch, three earned runs. Then they go to Chad, who got gave up a couple runs, too. Then James Paxton had his great start against Verlander. Pax. They let him go six, and they pulled him. Hicks off the pole. Hicks off the pole. So, I mean, how many did... Did Snell go? He they pulled him after six. Uh, was, was it, it in the fifth? In, in the sixth. In I the think. sixth. Five point. Five point. Right. <laughs> and then in the game that they lost to lose the CS, they went opener to Hap to everything. So whatever. I don't know. Make up your own decision. I, I would love to find out. Yeah, it was in answer. the sixth. Confirmed. Yeah. Blake Snell was. All right. Next voicemail. This is a two-parter? Yeah, play both of those. Double. Hey, Jimmy and Jake. Uh, So I just saw the news about the Lindor and Carrasco trade over to the Mets. Uh, Don't want to cover too much about the, you know, the financial aspect of it from the Indians. I'm sure you guys will cover that on Talking Baseball. But uh, from the Yankees' point of view, this is obviously a trade that pretty easily could have been made with the prospects the Yankees have in the system and, you know, probably without some of the names like Schmidt, Garcia, and and some of the others like that. So do you think this kind of has a big impact on what the Yankees are trying to do financially? Uh, It's just not spend. Wouldn't have been a huge commitment to get two studs in Cookie and Lindor. uh, Lindor. Uh, What do you guys think? Yeah, man. When I mean, oh, second part, second second part. Jump the gun. What's up, boys? Jordan from Boston. All right. Lindor just got traded to the Mets. Let's not overreact. We didn't think we were going to get him anyways, realistically. And looking at this team, as long as they can re-sign DJ, that's obviously a priority. They need to get some starting pitching, a couple bullpen arms potentially. But, you know, improving this team, it's on the roster. Give me a healthy judge. Give me a healthy stand. And give me a defensively improved Glaber potentially. Give me these guys back in a full season. Severino potentially for half a season. Maybe Herman, who knows. But the answers to being successful this year are on the team. They just need to perform. So we don't need Lindor. We need to sure up a couple things, get DJ back, and get healthy. Thanks, boys. Don't jump off the ledge. Go Yankees. Thank you, Jordan, from Boston. I love that you call. Love you, Jordan. Active part of the community. I disagree with your call. Love you, Jordan. Um, if all that stuff happens that you're talking about, that's just offensively. The Yankees pitching situation is in dire need of a lot of help and a lot of Hail Marys, to be honest. Um, coin flips. Yeah, I guess Hail Mary's not there. A lot of fourth and tens. What? <laughs> Football, John Boy. Add yeah. breakdowns. Um, let's go like, fourth and like, like Domingo is a coin flip. Like he's with us, and he looks like the Domingo Herman that's a mid three ZRA, good stuff, or like he's been away from baseball. It's bad, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, Severino, in theory, should come back And is he healthy Bulldog Severino Or is he kind of the laborious Hurt Sevy we saw That, again, like what is that? Clark and Davey Feels like one of them should have a good baseball season, right? They're not coin flips 
they're more like fourth and tens. Like, if you get it, that's great. We got to go for it. It's two down territory. A lot of football. <laughs> it's not two down territory on fourth and ten. Third well, and ten. Third and ten. Third, for Clark and Davey, it's third and third ten. Third and ten. And you third to. and eleven. Okay. Yeah. You had one backwards rush, and yes. it was like, why'd we run that? Yes. Sevy, Domingo, coin flips. I actually have Domingo as like more odds that it's going to land the right way than Sevy. In theory, it should, right? But yeah. you just don't know. It's baseball. And then Monty, coin flip, and like the the when you win the coin flip, it's not a huge return. It's just like, ah, oh, that works. Yeah. You're not expecting him to be lights out, but if he can pitch every fifth day and give you a chance to win, he can do that. Yeah. Um, again, a lot of these guys' arms aren't going to be able to be built up just from the last season, so you're going to rely on all the guys. The rotation's bad, so that's what I'm saying about Jordan. Rotation needs a lot of work and a lot of, like, I at these guys' best, it's a great rotation. I've been saying that forever. You get Domingo's 19, Seve's right. 17, Jordan Montgomery's 17. Cool. Yeah, that, and and Cole's life, that's a great top four. And then yeah. you have Davy and Clark's split. One of them step up. You have the Davy and Clark split the fifth. Like that is good, but you not you cannot bank on getting Sevy seventeen at all, at all, at all, at all. I don't even think it's a possibility. I think Domingo's nineteen. You can somewhat bank on it. I think like not bank on it, but it's part of the coin flip. I think, and what this is kind of alluding to is that when we've talked about the Yankees' offseason plan for months now. There's been a starting pitcher in the mix, and the, what I've been saying is the high-end option is Tanaka. Like, Tanaka's been with us. You kind of know what you're going to get. You know, you're going to get a lot of good efforts, one or two duds. Who really cares over the course of a season? We're a Tanaka pod. You guys know that by now. Or is it Kluber? <laughs> like we just talked about and we just laid out. The Yanks are still going to bring in one starting pitcher. Jules, Yo. Julius Chassin and Davey and Clark... That should be your five, six, seven, or your six, seven, eight. It's the question is, are they going to bring in uh, a high risk guy like Kluber? Are they going to bring in a Tanaka Oda Rizzi type? If Tanaka were to go back overseas and get something reliable in the rotation that is going to give you a nice major league season and potentially a playoff start, or you know, are we just playing roulette and? Hoping the young guys pan out Because you're right I mean there's a world where Brian Cashman believes In those guys best season And we're hoping at the end of this season We're saying Sevy looks great Cole looks great Ah Herman But I mean to get through a season There's not enough pitching right now And then bring it back to the Lindor trade Lindor trade He went to the Mets Yes And the Yankees could have done this package uh, It's The money is the issue yeah. I mean, it's the Yankees have some 18, 9 year olds that are on top 100 prospect lists, and they have guys behind that. They What what they got back for Lindor, like the Yankees could have done that. And so... I don't know. The best didn't really give anyone crazy. They gave two second-round picks in recent years who, okay, they're second-round picks, and the team you're trading with has to like your prospects. That's step one, which, you know, I'm sure Cleveland could find a couple guys they like. I think we're underselling Jimenez and Rosario a little bit. I mean, those guys played Major League Baseball last year. Rosario was a big prospect. He had a really nice age 23 season. I, I forgot about the the stopgap guys they got, like the can put in their roster right now. Like Rosario and Jimenez are going to be one to two war guys for the next five years for them. Yeah. So I, I think in theory the Yankees, uh, there's ways the Yankees could have matched the package. But if Carrasco was available separately and didn't have to be yeah. tied to Lindor, it's twenty four million dollars you're taking on twelve million this year, twelve million next year. I think it, they could have. I, I don't know. That's where you have to wonder where the money's at. Yeah. Like how much money is there to give out this year if they're giving twenty to DJ? Could they also give twelve to a Cookie? Uh, who knows? Yeah, like that's where it gets really tricky because you Carrasco, you want them to do something eventually. He would have been nice. Yeah, we could have talked ourselves into Carlos Carrasco. <laughs> Much more. Than By the way, I do like this, and I think I'm stealing this from Jack Curry. Same approach as me. He said, "He's like, don't be surprised if Lindor, if Glaber Torres ends up being the starting Yankee shortstop next year with DJ back. 
Don't be surprised if Lindor sparks a little bit under Glaber. Like shortstops in New York, Lindor's here. He's Mr. Smile. He's everything. You know, Ooh. a lot has been said about Glaber's defense. We know, you know, he keeps an eye on the socials. His pop keys in, keeps an eye on the socials. I could see Lindor sparking Glaber a little bit towards towards what we want to see. Improvement. Did you I, – I, I like that take. I mean, I think, you know, a lot of people poo-poo on that stuff, but that's very real. For New York and Glaber's – I feel dumb doing this because it was a thing for a while, but a 23-year-old. Gross. Who, like, you know, Glaber Torres sees himself historic and in Monument Park and a legend. And 24 now, so. 24 now. But, you know, when you're seeing everything on Twitter is you can't play defense and there's another team in town and, like, Lindor's the star shortstop, that's something guys do feel. Oh, mm. my God, no, no. I'll top the cost of phone. Jack Curry also said like he doesn't think there's any other offers for DJ out there. Jack Curry. Because you want to know what me and Jack Curry have in common? Pretty eyes. Huge fan. Oof, didn't think you were going there. Of reading the tea leaves. Yeah. And we're usually on the same wavelength. Does Jack drink tea? We can call him. He seems like a tea over coffee guy. Oh, we can't man. just call Jack Curry. He is. I DM him. I can text him. Flex. Flex. Blah. Um, I don't think he's a tea over coffee guy. I had a boss once who was a tea over coffee guy. I used to get mad at the way the Dunkin' Donuts poured his tea. I was like, dude. Yeah. You can't be. If you're going to be a tea guy. You can't get tea from Dunkin' Donuts and, expect, and then yeah. yell at them for making it the wrong way. He's like, you know, they put the the tea bag in first then pour the water on top of it they don't put the yeah. water in then dip the tea bag well it was oh. or it was the opposite right and I, I i mean i was young guy and we were just doing like road trips with my boss and he was like you know, and i'm like dude you can't be a tea guy get tea from dunkin donuts and then complain about the way they make your tea what were you saying about jack's tea leaves we read the same we read them the same way right. a lot like i saw that that what we did last week i saw the report on uh dj and it was like he doesn't have any offers yeah. like what do you mean re-engage you, that means you didn't get, you, like. I, you guys know it. My talking Yanks people, you see optimistic Jake come out sometimes. Man, and we just saw a very creative Liam Hendricks contract. If And and I don't know if any, are any questions tied to that at all, BBD? I don't believe so. Okay. Um, if you don't know, Liam Hendricks, uh, who has his own little place in Yankees history, that judge home run, um, and he commented on MLB about it, having fun. Uh, just got a really interesting payday from the White Sox to be their closer. The fourth year of the contract is either you play for that money or it's a straight like buyout over time and they can stretch it. The other day, we were talking about, I started getting excited about getting creative with DJ's contract. Offer him 16 this year, have the next year jump up to 22, 22, and then back to 20, something like that. Because, man, whatever little space they can add this year, if that can turn into an extra bullpen arm, if that can turn into two extra bullpen arms, I think that can be really huge for the Yanks this year, man. So I, I've gotten excited about that. And the other thing, and I think Jack Curry gets another assist. We got to text him. Boom, Jack Curry. I forgot about the, com- uh, the compensation pick attack to, to LeMahieu. There was, what, a five-round draft last year? All of these teams are copying the Rays? They value their draft picks? Or do they value paying a 33-year-old DJ LeMahieu whose best years of his life have been with the Yankees? There's The short porch is beneficial to all of his power numbers. Like, DJ's coming back, and it's it's just the number, and... A, a, I hope DJ LeMahieu gets paid. He deserves to get paid. I hope there's some nice creativity to the contract. And every day I don't think that contract is as big as we once thought. I think there's going to be a specific request from DJ LeMahieu's camp. Okay. I think there's a guy in the Yankees clubhouse area. There is a guy in the Yankees clubhouse area. Like a clubby, a okay. scout, non-player, that talks to DJ 
too much. Ooh. And constantly is like, DJ, did you see that video last night? Ooh. Oh, DJ, did you see this? DJ, did you check this out? Like, always showing DJ's phone. And I think what they're hung up on is he's asking the Yankees to put in the contract, that dude can't talk to me anymore. Yeah. And the Yankees are a bit nervous to go tell that guy because he thinks him and D- he thinks right. like I'm the one bringing DJ out We're of his boys. shell. I'm working on him cash. I'm getting him out of his shell. Like everybody else on the Yankees has had to give that guy a speech like, hey, man, like you're you're really helpful, but you can't be hitting me up that much. Like I got a lot going on. Like I really appreciate yeah, you. Yeah, but, but he still But comes. DJ, because he doesn't talk, like yes. he's never given him that speech. So he just not. DJ's my boy. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Kind of like a me and our college roommate where I just tried to talk, make every question I asked the group. We, right. had, we had a college roommate that didn't like to talk a lot. Didn't like to talk. So I had a question I would ask the group, like, what do you guys want to go for lunch? What do you think? His name. the yeah. guy, That's what this guy does to DJ. Like, okay. holy shit, that was a hell of a catch. You see that one, DJ? Yeah. And DJ's like, he needs to stop this. Yeah. Immediately. Yeah, like all the eyes go up the second that happens in yeah. the locker room. Oh, like, oh, dude, stop dragging DJ in every conversation. He doesn't like this. So I think that might be the biggest hang up. I miss talking to our ex roommate, Bleep. That didn't talk back. Full conversations. Yeah. I had, a, I had a great time with him. Good guy. Oh, yeah. No, good friend. Could be mean, though. Well, when he talked, he was mean. <laughs> that was like the issue. <laughs> 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 you finally get in the crack and be like, you guys are a bunch of losers. He would take a jab at us. Yeah, just like be like, yes. <laughs> Which is like, okay, so you talk? <laughs> you hang out with us, He's man. Like, we, sit, we sit in the same living room every day. It just hurt me deep inside. This is a hell of a drop, BBD. Like drop him. king. Okay, um, so what do we come to a conclusion? Kluber, not a Yankee. DJ will be a Yankee. Glaber, maybe partially motivated. Me and Jack DJ Curry will be a drink Yankee. Drink the same tea. Jack Curry seems like a tea guy. Yeah. <sighs> Next voicemail? Big app. Hey, guys. It's Cameron from Midtown. Uh, congrats, John Boy, on getting married. Jake. Great always to speak with you. Um, I haven't called in a little bit because I've been in college, but I have a big question for each of you guys. If you were to give one goal to each section of the team, so one goal for the hitters, one goal for the pitchers, one goal for the bullpen next season, what would that be? It could be an individual goal, but it could be an overall goal for the whole team as well, that whole section. Um, Anyway, if that made sense, talk to you guys later. Peace. I'm guessing he doesn't want us to say, I want the hitters to score runs. I want the pitchers yeah. to not allow runs. Win the World Series. Uh, yeah, I'd like the bullpen to find out where Chapman is most ticklish. Oh, I don't want that. Someone I will die. I do want that, and I want it to be live during the seventh inning of a game, and they cut the K, and K goes, it looks like there's some sort of commotion in the bullpen. Johnny Lasagna looks and to have just... Tickled there's, Chapman. Oh, and Johnny Lasagna's dead. There's five guys chasing Chapman. Yeah. Yeah. Chapman's having a little fun because he doesn't think they're going to take it. As, like, at first, he's juking a little bit and stuff. And then they finally get there, and they're tickling. Yeah. Oh, it's it spikes to the face, kicking away. Know what happens? What? Ben Heller gets pretty hurt. He's not on the team anymore. Heller is. Oh. Heller gets called up. And he's excited, and it's like, okay, but I think it's going to be Ben Heller. This is the Ben Heller story. Yes, yes, Every yes. time it's like, oh, I think it's going to be Ben Heller time. He, like, gets suspended or something happens. Yeah, and then they, and like, they like, someone pulls him aside, like, listen, Ben, it's not the armpits. We tried that. Ben Heller. It's not the feet. He gets 15 we stitches in his face. And you're like, 15? <laughs> what happened? <laughs> All right, anyway. And real, the bullpen just won't talk about it. Real answer. Let's, uh, let's get the starting pitchers to, uh, like, Four of the five mm. go go pole to pole pitching. Whoa. No injuries. That's impossible, right? Yeah. All right, <laughs> call. Don't get hurt. Oh, I'm getting a call from potential spam. I hate this. It's not guy. Jack Curry, is it? Uh, no, 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 no. Um, this is kind of hard. I don't know what he's looking for here. This is tricky. I I like it though. I I like it. Um, a lot of it. A lot of where I'm going is more Boone doing like. Uh, lineup. Let's have a solid one through five the whole year. Mm. Like, let's not have a lot of mixing and matching. Like the the top six hitters. Let's make them the top six hitters. But that's more. I boom. think you got to reel that in a little bit. I th- I think like top three would be more f- f- fathomable. Fathom. Fav- 
my number my number one wish is that Judge and Cole. I'm not even gonna finish that sentence. Okay, it's beautiful. It's beautiful. Um, I mean, it all ends up at the end of the season for me. Like, I want to be at the end of the season, and I, I really like three starting pitchers, whether that's Cole, Sevy, Tanaka, whether that's Cole, Sevy, Davey, whether that's Cole, Sevy, Domingo. Like, there's routes there. You know, that's where I want to, I want to end up. Three starting pitchers I like. The bullpen. Four guys we feel good about by the end of the season. I like what you've done here, and you just said at the end of the season. I don't because care. It's tough. I don't care who it is. Yeah, I don't care what benchmarks you hit or didn't hit. Like it would be let's fantastic. Make the, if let's we, make the playoffs. If we loved bullpen Johnny Lasagna by the end of the season, awesome. Yeah, it I'm does. It does cut to us eating a lot of lasagna on the live streams oh. during the playoffs. And that cuts us a lot of being sleepy. Yeah. So, but I like what you're saying here. So, okay. At the end of the season, we want three starting pitchers we like. Yeah. Don't care who it is. Gumby could be the third. Davey could be the third. Clark could be the third. They could be the second. Don't care who it is. Three that, I want Cole to be one of them. Cole has to. Then two others that we're happy about. Yeah. Like, yep, give him the ball. Yeah. Four relievers. I think four is the number because you got Chappie, you've got Britain, you've got Otto as of now, you've Ch- got Chad. Chad. So maybe five. How about I'll, I'll up the number? Give me five I'm happy about. Lasagna, Nick Nelson, sign someone. Because we know the bullpen, there hasn't been enough bodies down there. Can I hit you with a little like tough, like offensively you need like eight. You need like every, you need like everyone to be healthy. Yeah, I mean offensive gets so tricky. Yeah. Um, you want to talk baseball or basketball? Hit the passing button, BBD. It's a big one. I mean, it's one of the bigger ones. Passing. Awesome. Brooklyn, the Nets, talking Nets, is acquiring James Harden in a blockbuster deal reported by Ramona Shelburne. So, it's a big one. Yeah. It's big for what it's worth, I had a source. <laughs> Friend of a source. Get out of here. <laughs> Pass along to me. That's a three-way trade. You kind of did. So that's they were. They one. thought it was going to get done last night. It didn't. A lot of football and basketball today. Feeling dirty. Hey, it. can I ask a question? Yeah. Is your source your neighbor? He, uh, not him. Okay. But do, do people know what your who your neighbor is? I think so. I don't think we should talk. Some about of the it. deep. Cuts okay, so, yeah. we won't talk about it. Um, get off his ass about get it. Off his ass about it. <laughs> the lineup. We got to move on. I like this question. I'm happy that he congratulated me on my marriage. I'm happy that he enjoys talking with you, speaking with you. Yeah. That was the start of it, Kind of the rudest way to say that. I enjoy speaking with you. Enjoy, you know, one of the highlights of your life. You know what he was saying? He was like, he was like, Jimmy, congrats on the marriage. Jake, I know you're listening as well. Yeah. That's basically what he was saying. Glad you're here. Just, I know you, no, not even that. It's kind of translates to, you're here. Jake, you're here. Here's my question. <laughs> All right, next yeah. next voicemail. <laughs> hey, John Boy and Jake, this is Jeremy from California again. Yeah, I'm calling because I was listening to your voicemail show with with uh, favorite Yanks, in, you know, favorite Yanks and least favorite Yanks, and I had a second thought or a question for you. Who is your favorite Yankee who came from the Red Sox, and who is your least favorite Yankee to end up on the Red Sox. You know, for me, it was Johnny Damon. Just always brings a smile to my face thinking of Johnny Damon as a Yankee. And for some reason, Eduardo Nunez on the Red Sox just always irritated me. So, something to think about. Think that. Was, is the second part a, a, someone that was a Yankee and then went to the so who was a Yankee that you hated seeing on the Red Sox? David Cohn. And who was a uh, – that's a good one. And who was – David Wells, too? Did he pitch for mm-hmm. Boston? Boomer did as well. Those are, yeah. those are pretty I mean, good When ones. I, like, first got into baseball, like, 2005 was the – I was seven, so it was the first year I could, like, actually mm-hmm. know what was happening. I think that was the year Wells was on the Red Sox. When I found out he was a Yankee, it mm-hmm. kind of blew my mind. Turns out he was more, he's a Yankee much more. Red Sox. I have a really, I have a really weird like deep cut with for you guys. I love it. I'm here for that. I was upset. Yeah. When Alfredo Aceves, Mm. I I wasn't 
didn't care that he was moving on from the Yankees. Right. But then we went to the Red Sox, and then they got in a little brawl, and Aceves was kind of the bad guy on the Red Sox. Yeah. Who then I was like, oh shit! Not only are you Red Sox now, but now I don't like you because I like he had a good year for the Yankees in '09 when they won the World Series. So anyone attached to that, I, I enjoyed. Uh, so that's like a really deep cut. Like I don't, yeah. I wouldn't truly care. Like it wasn't like, oh, gross. I can't see him in that uniform. But I was like, oh man, now like yeah. don't like you. I kind of like you were kind of cool. Um, I've got one that I'm I'm happy my brain jumped to, Ramiro Mendoza. Mm. Love me some Ramiro Mendoza. He did two two years with the Sox. Not good. Damon's probably the favorite. Damon's fun. I mean, all the nudity. Um, you know, ha- had a lot of fun. Obviously, that in, that endears me to Damon. Um, and I'm trying to think what uh what other big ones are out there. Are there any big fish? Well, I I'm don't think G. I was did. pretty upset when Euclid came over. I didn't like you in a. In, I didn't like Euclid in a fun way. I respected him. It was so weird his batting yeah. sense. If you ever went to a game and saw it like it, with your own eyes, so weird. And then. Especially that it didn't matter at all. It was like a month, and they yeah. got hurt, and then he left. I'm like, I just wish this. I wish those <sighs> pictures didn't even exist. Yeah, that was. I got excited for you, Clis, because that batting stance had been so like, oh my god, and felt like he felt like he was a guy that played well against the Yankees. So was, I was excited for him to give the Sox a taste of their own medicine, and he did not. No, he very much did not. I was excited for Euclid because he was one of the he's like one of the Red Sox that like you said respected, liked him as much as I could like a Red Sox at that time, and mm-hmm. when he, he came to the Yankees, he so some, he liked that, and he was Jewish, so no oh. easy. He had some nasty seasons, man. He was pretty good for a while. I mean, three time All Star from two thousand five to twenty eleven, six years. He hit 291, had a 393 on base, and an 890 OPS. <laughs> it's really good. <laughs> really good. Elson Howard played for the Red Sox. Ooh. Some, like, older ones. Wade Boggs is clearly as a, probably a favorite yeah. for a lot of people. Um, Wade's got a way, man. Like, I, obviously, that's a little before our time. But, like, I don't really care. No, but the horseback yeah. riding right. stuff is really good. Like that that one hurts Red Sox fans a lot more than it hurts Because he won fans. here. Yeah. Johnny Damon, same thing. Do people say Clemens? But again, that's another Clemens. one Damon that hurts. also got them a win. Yeah. So they don't think a lot of people um are shocked that you didn't say Duffy Lewis. I think Ellsbury is anyone's favorite. Tough man. No. Someone. He's got someone who stopped following baseball. Yeah, relatives, right? Jacoby? Yeah. We don't know. Remember, we're going to do that Finding Jacoby documentary? Yeah. It's such a good documentary. Awesome. Basketball again, but oh, part of the move God. is Oladipo to the Rockets. Wow. Basketball. Hot. A lot of basketball today. Yankees, go get these guys. Why didn't Houston get them? Rick Cerrone. Rick Cerrone. <laughs> Luis Tiant. I'm on a website. Ooh, now. Tiant's probably a good one for. Some Babe, of our Babe Ruth. Whoa. I liked where I landed with Alfredo Seves. I think that's a deep cut our generation one. Happy for you. He was like the sixth inning, seventh inning guy for the 09 Yankees. Yeah. He's kind of mean. Seemed to like he was kind of mean. Okay. I mean, you see him, you look at his pictures. Just looks looks like a kind of mean guy. Don't know anything about him. Yeah. Oh my God, John Lester's picture on Google is awful. Yeah. Oh. I mean, he looks like both cheeks after your root canal. Yeah, like he looks like someone put like bloated face feature on his picture. Tough. Yeah, not good. We have one more voicemail, I believe. What's happening? Jimmy Jake, BBD, Max Manis calling in from Israel. Uh, I've been in a bit of a reminiscent mood the last few days, spending a lot of time just watching old Yankees highlights, especially from the last few years on YouTube. And I know, like, 
I feel like when you think of memorable Yankees moments past, like a lot of the time we think of the playoffs, but I was just thinking about some of the fun regular season wins that might not come to mind at first, but that we've had the last few years and even before that. So when you guys think of the most memorable regular season wins that you've seen the last few years, what specifically comes to mind? I'm curious. Uh, for me, the main one that came to mind was Stanton's walk-off homer against the Mariners in 2018, which I was in attendance for. And I, for some reason, very specifically remember Jimmy saying on the podcast also that he was there and that some kid came up to get a photo with him and that his friend was like, I have no idea who you are. So um, so that Stanton game came to mind, and Gary's walk-off homer against the Twins also in 2018 came to mind. So, yeah, just wondering what regular season wins really stick out to you guys in the last few years. Thanks, guys. One question. I'll just keep it to 17, 18, 19, 20, because that's when I would have been like. Recent. The talking Yanks era. Talking. Tech- talking. Oh, I like that. BBD, I love that. Wow. Uh, yes, I was at the Stanton walk off. Yes, this kid like DM me was like, can I come say hi? I said hi. He was with his buddy. They were probably 12 to 14 years old. Mm. Hot. So said hi. The kid was like a little nervous, but said hi. Sure. And then I turned to the kid he was with, and I was like, hey, what's going on? And he. <laughs> Like, I didn't say, like, are you excited, too, or anything. I just said, hey, what's going on, man? And the little kid just looked at me and says, I, I have no idea who you are. Perfect. I was like, fair. Fair. Same. Same. It was really funny, though. He, like, felt bad about it. He was like, sorry, man. Wish I did. I was like, I, I was like it's oh. all good. Jeremy Marsh in the chat with a good one. Uh, the Hicks catch, that Twins game. That was just so that insane. comes to mind. 2017. You have the comeback against the Orioles with Starlin's home run and the Grand Slam. I think Ellsbury hit a Grand Slam in that game. That then you have Guardy Cubs. Guardy Cubs is really there. The three-run home run in the top of the ninth inning. Bring Chapman in, close it out. Those are two big ones for me. Uh, 2018, that season's kind of a blank for me. That's, that's Stanton. That's Stanton's home Stanton. run. And, and Gary had one against the Twins. I remember that. Um, the one from that year that sticks with me is the Disco Neil walk off. Mm. Yeah, that was fun. Or was that that was eighteen, right? Am I making that was eighteen? That, that was eighteen. Right that was eighteen. Uh, nineteen or eight? I don't know when this was. The um, the Gar- the Guardy bases clearing triple against the Red Sox when they brought Kimbrel in, mm. I believe, and Guardy. I think that's early nineteen. I guess May, like May of twenty nineteen, if I'm remembering. Right. That was there maybe were we there for No, that? no, it was a, it was it was 18, it was 18. This one's part illegal, but like the London series jumps out some of them for the wrong reasons, but those are pretty firm memories. Yeah. I mean Purcello and Tanaka just looking like <laughs> batting practice. <laughs> um I'm trying to think is there any from the 2020? Man. 2020 regular season. Like the Mets fiasco? They weren't like good wins. Yeah, I feel like a lot of weird stuff jumps out and like bad stuff. Like the Adovino inning. <laughs> I mean, those that Mets series were like the Yankees did everything wrong, but somehow. Yeah, they somehow won. <laughs> Opening day was awesome. Opening day. It wasn't like a, a crazy finish, but. Nats. As good a start as it could yeah. with that Stanton homer. It was a rain out. <laughs> yeah. It's rain outs? Thing. Rain outs are like the biggest thing. Yeah. So the Red Sox were up six there was to that f- Orioles game with the middle of the Judge Homer after the rain out. Not rain out, delay. Delay. Oh, yeah, I kind of remember that. I'm I'm finding stuff to get everyone in a good mood right now. Okay. So this was the game I was talking about against the Red Sox. The Red Sox were up six to five going into the last inning when they bring in Kimbrell. Um let's see. Torres is rounding third. He's coming home. Here's the throw. They bring in Kimbrough. Lead by one. Do Two on. Another big hit in them for this game. Nine come from behind wins, Paul, just this season. Fly ball. Left center. On the run is Betts. Going back. It's on his head. It's up against the wall. Walker scores. Torres is rounding third. He 
He's coming home. Here's the throw. He's safe. A two-run triple for Gardner. And the Yankees have retaken the lead. Neil Walker. So it's 18. What you're watching because the Yankees are a confident team right now with a lot of talent. What theater? What Next theater? batter, Aaron Judge comes up against Kimbrell. Two, two, Judge. Left to run home. Tony looking. See ya. Two. And that's when a little inside baseball for you guys. Judge referred to the team as the closer killers, mm. which isn't public knowledge. We kill closers. He was stalking the dugout. Dead. We kill closers. And those sound clips get you excited. Yeah, put you in a different place, huh? Get you a little juicy. Juicy Lucy. You if you were a food? Yeah, you always say that. I think I said it once. Anything else? That's all the voicemails. What show? Did they sign anyone while we were doing this? They forgot? I think they forgot to do that. It's a total bummer. Back-to-back January 13th of note for the city of Houston one year ago today was the, um, what's his name suspended? Hinch. Hinch suspension. Hard and trade. Was, that was one year ago. H names. So this is one year ago today when we had our live event? Yeah. Cool. Lou Ellen was tweeting at you all day. We were in LA. I'm not Twitter guy. Not. What did you just say? What was the last thing you said? Guy. No lies. I ain't a liar. Only thing I ever lied about was being a thief. Fuck shit, damn. Goodbye. Go Yanks. Tell them, Grams. Go Yankees.